Okay, my name is Martin de Groot. Um, I work for the Common Studio, which is the host organization for this Explorations in Oral History project. Um, my background is history. I have a PhD in history, U.S. history, and also my background is being involved with the regional arts community. Uh, for 10 years, I was executive director of the Waterloo Regional Arts Council. And also, uh, for 20 years now, I've written a column for the Waterloo Region Record uh, about arts and culture. And I've been in all sorts of boards and all that kind of thing. So I've been active with the community. I think it began with the Festival of Neighborhoods because I was there when John McDonald made the presentation to council and proposed the Festival of Neighborhoods. And then the Arts Council, I wasn't executive director yet, I was on the board, but we were always involved with the uh, Festival of Neighborhoods. I used to judge, they had floats, competitions for floats, and they did a parade, did various things, and it kind of evolved over the years, but uh, we were always involved. So that's how it started. And then later, when I became executive director, which was, I think, 2001, we developed a closer partnership, and not just once a year with the Festival of Neighborhoods, but an ongoing one, because at one point, the Arts Council was almost gone. Uh, you know, some people wanted to shut it down. It was so, uh, it was so anemic uh, that it, came, it actually came down to a vote. They made me president. And then it, came, it was a vote saying, shall we shut this down? It was 50-50. <laughs> and the, the business people on the board wanted to shut it down. The artists on the board wanted to keep it going. And so my vote counted uh, because I had to decide. The, the chair only votes when there's a tie. So I said, okay, let's keep it going. And then we decided, okay, we'll keep it going, but we'll just do one thing and do it well. And this is how we'll rebuild the Arts Council, and that one thing was doing a cultural directory. But we published it, it was a book. Uh, in 2001, I became executive director, and we were ready for the second edition of this cultural directory. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we needed an online presence, too, for the directory. So one of the first things I did as executive director is go and talk with Trudy Bone at the uh, Social Planning Council because I knew they had a program called the uh, uh, Community Information Network. That, and I thought, they're already in the information uh, providing uh, business. They know about directories and all of that. Maybe they can work with us. I mean, they must know. And it turned out to be a really, really fruitful partnership for us. Because first of all, they had all sorts of pointers about how to do this. We didn't overlap with anything that was already there because the cultural field wasn't really part of what the, the community the information network did, except for the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the cultural organization, the ethnocultural. They had lists of those which really helped us because we wanted to include those in our directory. Uh, so, we developed this sort of partnership, they gave us pointers, we made sure the two systems were, were compatible, but then also Trudy, by that time, was executive director, uh, and she made a connection with the people at the university. They ran something called the Computer Systems Group. These were veteran program development at the university, people who were involved with the early days of their whole computer studies program, and they did programs and services for the university, and they were interested in what we were doing and also what with Trudy and the Community Information Network was doing, because they were doing a big sort of uh, experimental university, so they were interested in experiments and trying this and that. And uh, Trudy made that connection, and they helped develop uh, our online presence. Well, especially that, because that's the, the, the information part, right? The, the keeping of the directories, collecting information, making it available to people, because they published this like Blue Book or whatever, that kind of thing. So I think that, for me, stood out. 
plus it, the partnership for us was especially useful because in the arts, you know, it's always, it's perceived as, and the people working in the arts perceive themselves as something kind of peculiar and separate from everything else. But we're not, you know, there's a lot of overlap, there's a lot of compatibility with, and because the Social Planning Council had a much broader sort of connection with the community, with the police, with neighborhoods and all that, it was a very good partnership for us because it helped break that sort of mentality of being a world of ourselves. But we're not a world of ourselves, we're a world part of the, the community, right? And I think that connection uh, really benefited the Arts Council. And I think maybe it, it benefited the Social Planning Council too because they didn't really include the arts until we developed this relationship, right? Trudy invited me to be on the social planning committee, um, which still has the social planning. And I met, we used to meet once every two months, and uh, I wasn't very good at attending all the meetings because it was on Thursdays and I was busy. <laughs> but for the most part, that's the last of, of my. And then also, when we applied for the, the, to the uh, New Horizons for Seniors program to get the money for this oral history program, Trudy was one of the first people I spoke with because I said, hey, uh, you're doing your 50th anniversary next year, let's include, uh, so we wrote it right in the application and Trudy wrote a support letter and we got the money to buy the, that camera right there that's point happy and those lights that are... Uh, so that was a, a, a later uh, development where I worked with the Social Planning Council Social Development Center by that point. But Trudy was involved with the Common Studio from the very beginning. The Common Studio goes back to 2006. And it used to be called the Multicultural Cinema Club. Mm -hmm. And it was started, the idea for it came from... Uh, uh, someone from Syria. He was from Syria. His name was uh, Azam Fukalade. And he came here uh, long before the troubles in Syria. Uh, mm -hmm. And he had a job at RIM. Not a fancy job, it was just assembly or something. And his dream was to start something uh, that he eventually called the Multicultural Cinema Club. And it was based on uh, models that he knew from Syria. Because it provided equipment, it provided, supported filmmaking in the community, uh, but it also showed films, it had festivals, and there was a local focus festival and all of that. So at the beginning, Azam's dream, he worked with the, uh, the, the working center on uh, a couple of documentaries, and so he talked with Joe Mancini of the working center, and the working center was interested in helping get this started. And then Joe came to us at the uh, at the uh, the Arts Council, and we also talked to Trudy at the Social Planning Council. So the Social Planning Council, the Waterloo Regional Arts Council, and the Working Center together, kind of incubated this project. She was she was the Social Development Center, you know, especially for me because that was my point of contact. Uh, but also she was always, it was all, it's always a, a difficult challenge to keep these organizations going. You know, both the, the Arts Council and the Social Planning Council is difficult to sort of summarize exactly what they do uh, because their roles are so complicated and also uh, Social Planning Councils in different communities do different things and yet there is a kind of common element. Uh, Arts Council is exactly the same and so we had a lot of ways we could talk with one another because we were facing the same challenges. Um, but she was an indomitable spirit. She was never discouraged by these and always kept going and always was just so extremely resourceful and had those ways of connecting with the community that I just thought were awesome in the true meaning of the word. I mean, I was almost in awe of what she was capable of doing. Well, there's been so many... It's been, you know, it's been, what a long, strange trip it's been, right? Like the Grateful Dead song says. But, uh, and it's been 
rocky for these organizations in some ways, right? Our, and the, our, the arts councils, we, almost twice, we almost disappeared and come back, and now we are 10 years in hiatus, but uh, at least seven years in the hiatus. But I think that social planning councils, or whatever you want to call them, it could be social development, said whatever, uh, or community development said it, they and arts councils are or should be perceived as a fundamental uh, a part of the civic infrastructure of communities. Everybody understands what a, what a chamber of commerce does, what a tourism bureau does, uh, what a volunteer bureau does. Social planning councils or social development centers and arts councils are similar, but they're not as well understood and they're not supported the way they could be. And I'm still affiliated with the social development center and still interested in what this what can replace uh, the arts council. So what's changed over the years, I think, is that in some ways our communities need these organizations more than they ever did. Um, and I think actually, despite the fact that it looks sort of gloomy sometimes, you know, when funding disappears and all sorts of other organizations come in and take some of the that kind of thing, but yet, when you look at what's changed over the years, you know, everything has become more globalized. Uh, and But at the same time, there's the local, the community, that counts more than it ever did. People understand cities and people understand community and neighborhoods and all that kind of thing. The, and people understand the arts, the importance of creativity, the creative class and all that kind of thing is more than ever before. So that combination, you know, the neighborhood, the community level and the local is what makes these two kinds of organizations so vital. So changes in some ways that look, it's been a rocky road, and yet I'm very optimistic about the role of these organizations. Yeah. So yeah, you, um, so yeah, you were talking about the role of the organizations. Can you add anything about how um, the role of the social development center and Trudy's role in the community? Yeah, I mean, Trudy's role as a person with all the kind of work and projects, and there's so many different kind of projects. And I think both um, the Arts Council and the Social Planning Council, Social uh, Community Development Center, were always very adventurous. Like we took on different things, you know, when the opportunity came. And I think that's great. I hope we continue that kind of thing. Uh, that we take things on, that they're a way, uh, an umbrella under which to do something, a, a, a mechanism, uh, an organization that does these kind of things, or at least leads them up. Um, I think that's important. I think in the case of the Community Development Center, it's that neighborhood community where people actually physically live that's the most important element. And I think also, and I think that's not maybe something that's come through as much, um, what we really need since the uh, social development sector is so large and diverse, there's all sorts of social development agencies and different, um, you need a connecting element, you know, you need something that sort of represents and connects all those pieces. Um, so representation of the sector, I think, is a role that the social, the community development center uh, can and should take on when it's so, so diverse. And it's different in the arts where it's, the sector is clear and more, and it's not as complicated and the programs are thinner and all of that kind of thing. But in that way, they're comparable because I think representation is key. Uh, a, a voice for, other than the voice of people who are working as civil servants in the government and all of that. And I think that's one of the things that's made it work more difficult for both these kinds of organizations because cities do a lot more than they did before in those areas. The city used to have nothing to do with the arts at all. And when the arts arose, it was under um, the uh, 
parks and recreation at first, right? Now it's, it, it's economic development, but it was parks and recreation at first. And similar with social programs, you know, now that the mayor's got a, a, a neighborhood this move, and all, but the Social Planning Council kind of started these things and started them going. I think in some ways um, that separation, when you do these things under the wing of an organization that's at arm's length and not a city department, uh, is very useful for doing some of these things.